new for the gems people buy in the NM purchases. But, um, you know, I was just wondering, like, if when it comes to, like, cashing out in OMI or, like, bringing in OMI, is that something Apple... Um, is it's in place now, like where they're fine with that? Because I see some Omi Wallet stuff on the Android app, but I don't see it on the iOS app. And also, like when there is the eventual cash out option, um, you know, I'm assuming there must be some fees due to banks and stuff like that. But um, does that, if Apple is is taking anything from you guys when you load up gems, does that also get cut from that? And what kind of? I know you can't probably answer exact amount, but like, what would one gem? come out as in dollars um, eventually. Thanks. Yeah, okay, cool. Thanks for that. Um, so a couple of things. Um, your Apple app does have uh, Omi Wallet. It just doesn't exist in your phone. So for those of you who use an iPhone, um, you can go to uh, omi.fevi.me and basically it will unlock um, your your wallets and gems and uh, Omi. So that's number one. Uh, number two is, uh, yes, Apple has a very strict uh, no second thing in payment systems. So, um, and this is one of the reasons why the Omi 2 gem was blocked uh, for the reason is that we are bypassing their payment uh, aggregator. Uh, we do pay Apple just like any other company out there. So they do take uh, 30%, which is public knowledge now. Um, the integration of the caching out, we call that withdrawal, is really just to allow some of the users um, to have the flexibility to take out what they have ex- ex- extra on the gems. Uh, there will be a fee. They, uh, we are uh, we are going to be regulated, um, and the fee could be up to ten percent. Uh, we are still working with our banking partner and provider how that's going to work. And we will be cashing them out as a US dollar. And I, I do believe that our banking partner will be converting that to your local uh, domestic currency. But once again, I think yesterday's AMA then did mention that we will be trialing a small group and then we'll be expanding and extending to and invite all the other users into it. And just so everyone know, we only have very small amount of user have access gems that uh, we feel like they need to be cashing out. You can imagine um, when we get to about a million active users and everyone has um, a dollar in it, it you, there's a million dollars. So if everyone have average $40 in it, there's going to be like, uh, you know, $40 million sitting there. But only a very small portion of them of our active user have excessive uh, gem balance, you know, greater than few thousand dollars, shall I say. And and th- those are the number one target list that we will want to trial how this works. And they do need to go through KYC. It's not like um, you, you can just push a button and the money just comes out to your phone or something. So they do need to go through a proper channel. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Mark, Mark, we got you up next, then Prop, then um, OMW. Hey, David. Um, I had a quick question about um, the challenges on licensing. Uh, when it came to, uh, I guess, anime titles, um, how how difficult is it for you guys to acquire? Okay. Um, yeah, that, that's a real great question. Um, and it's something that I do full-time in the company. It's part of my uh, task. Um, so just uh, just so everyone understand, any licensing, anything, even DC, Marvel, they are incredibly hard to deal with uh, in, in, multiple, in multiple ways. Uh, number one is uh, these multinational are almost run like, uh, like by lawyers. So the lawyers are very protective uh, how the IP are being used and how are they being monetized and how they get... Um, paid as well in every way uh, now so the honest truth is japan is even tougher now what we don't uh, what most of the user doesn't understand is that that one batman or one harley quinn or one of these marvel characters that you are buying as an nft 
the amount of people and talents and uh, sign off it require it, it, some some sometimes there's about forty fifty people involved from from the creative from the coloring from the inker from the approval from the creative production to the legal to drafting everything and the advertising the marketing the banner the 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 billing text everything all needs to be signed off now. The problem with anime, especially Japanese anime, we're talking about, is that Dragon Ball Z, for example, the first one and the Dragon Ball Z, as you know of today, that's playing, they are completely different company. They sounds like it's one brand, but they they do break them down into different、uh, licenses. And how it works is who publishes it, and who draws it, and which design studio、uh, color and the voice actor behind that. So,、um, when we look at signing up license, it's it's very difficult、um, to find one that owns everything that they do,、um, and and it's just the fact it, it takes a long time to get every single signature. So it's not not like、uh, if you get a Dragon Ball Z, you had every Dragon Ball Z they ever made from the first series to the Dragon Ball Z Z or. The new Dragon Ball Z. It, they're all very different ownerships. Awesome, awesome prop. Yeah, yeah. Hey, David. This is a、uh, propagandist.、Um, thanks so much for the answer and、uh, happy birthday. Happy thanks. Easy birthday. Thank you.、Um, yeah, I, I love the the platform. It's wonderful. I'm I'm actively trading every day on DV, and it's、um, absolutely what, what I do full time.、Um, So I did have a, just a, a general question about、um, collecting and how it, I guess, sort of、um, uh, will reflect what it, I guess, what the VV verse will be for, what it will look like.、Um, so just, I guess, in general, like, is 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 the VV verse、um, a place where I guess a collector or collectors would be? Well, I guess is the VV verse something that attracts collectors? Is it for collectors? Or are you, or are there going to be people that, or you market to to be a part of the, the part of the VV verse, but are not necessarily collectors? So I, I guess I'm asking: Is the VV verse something that is going to be,、um, you know, I guess attractive to collectors who want to be in the metaverse, or are there other aspects, you know, specifically, or you know, that that are going to just attract the general、uh, public who? Want to come and and interact with things in in the VV verse. So I wonder what your thoughts are、yeah. on that.、Um, yeah, so that that's a great question. So we we always thought about NFT as only a byproduct to to you know unlimited universe,、um, and we really do believe that gaming assets one day will be able to come out to VV from gaming company wish to integrate with us. And for us to go into another gaming asset, so that's number one. The VV first. The whole idea really coming in is because we really do believe wearable device. You know, our VR glasses and, and all mixed reality, your mobile phone, and what do you want to see in it, and what, how do you want to interact with one one and another is another thing. So we really wanted to use that opportunity for collectors in VV. To express himself and need work in a metaverse, so we are going to be running、uh, art, art exhibitions. So you can actually in in the center of the metaverse, there, there's going to be gallery, for example, or sports stadium. It could be right,、uh, you know, what you see in real life is what we're going to have it in there. The idea is to bring everyone into it and everyone who has the same hobby, and you could be in London. Where it's snowing down down in New Zealand, Australia, it's summertime, and it's windy somewhere. I, anyone can join into the metaverse and enjoy another company, and you 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 kind of become a a, a friend, a a good friend,、um, talking about the same subject and looking at it. And the idea is just bringing that community even one more step closer. Than what you would in how we doing it now. So you you will be hope hopefully you know we will be able to turn on the voice function where you can speak to one and another in in the VV verse. 
Jeez. Awesome, great answer. Thank you. <laughs> OMW, OMW. Hey, what's going on, David? Uh, congratulations. Happy birthday. Thank you. Real quick, um, I do have something that I want to bring up to you about the mm-hmm. Rebirth, but I don't want to publicly speak about it because I'm in the works of trying to get a patent. But, you know, you guys just keep on dropping collectibles. But uh, on on another note, for for the, the sense of licensing, I spoke with Trevor earlier about a museum. I know it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of licensing power to get to that stage, but do you think that that might be something you guys might be interested to, like, possibly get uh, the license behind the Mona Lisa or other big, big pieces of art? I like Van Gogh yeah. or Picasso. Okay, so uh, that, that's a very good question. Uh, and, and just so you guys understand, we do have a huge lineup of IPs coming. Like, uh, we, we, when, when Dan said we have years of content, he does mean we have years of content. That's number one. Number two is, I love art. So I, I really believe that, you know, uh, the, the way we have been um, sending things out or selling it, publishing it, or whatever you call it, it, it is very important. What I really believe, what we want to do is slowly bringing more and more artists into VV. And also we need to ensure that the, the subject matter and the relevant with VV is c- close connected. So, I, I mean, I have a lot of friends to go, well, you know, all these other artists, the big names, I won't name them because it's probably going to be on YouTube tomorrow, say confirm, but it's not. Um, I know a lot of the big name artists, but if I bring them into VV today, it's not going to be relevant to a lot of the audience that we have. For, for example, we have seen a lot of these artists are trying to do their own NFT in different platform. And I, I tell you, some of these artists are extraordinary artists, but they don't do very well in their NFT because they're not becoming relevant. They don't have a Discord. They don't set up a Telegram. They don't spread their messages out there. With Phoebe, what we do is almost like an end-to-end, and we allow a lot of these cool artists. And what, what we have done right now, bringing Frank on, Jermaine, uh, Ron English, and, and we've got Simone, and we've, we've got a lot more artists that we'll be announcing in the coming weeks, is that they are relevant to what our community is about, and we're about pop, fandom, and it's related to licensing and you know innovation. But you, you are right. We are going to have to start looking to bring some of these cool stuff, you know, like you say, Mona Lisa, like these Van Gogh, there's opportunity. And we have reached out to um, these foundations and museums to look at how we can help them um, to raise money, raise awareness, to become relevant to the new audience. Uh, we are doing a lot of these things and um, we'll continue. Uh, but the, mo- most of those things will probably uh, hopefully exist in the Phoebe first when we run exhibitions. I, I just don't know how Mona Lisa, the museum, will feel if we start minting the NAT off it type of thing. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have to have a look at it. Uh, but right now, our, our main aim is to grow our audience and to have rele- relevant subject matters that is close to our fan base. Awesome. Nexus, go ahead, man. Um, thank you so much for having me up here, Khaki. And hi, David. Um, happy birthday, you know, like one year. That's amazing, bro. Thank you. Um, so you answered the question about anime earlier, and I've been, like, talking about anime for a while. Like, we really love anime over here. So when it comes to, like, um, there's a lot of anime or different IPs out there that have fusions with their IPs, right? So you got Digimon, you got um, Dragon Ball Z especially. So mm-hmm. with the Dragon Ball Z, like I know like this is, you know, that comes down to licensing, but do you guys think it would be a dope idea to have fusions where when you fuse your NFTs, it burns some sort of like either the NFT itself, like for example, if you have 100,000 of Vegeta, 100,000 of Goku, when you fuse two of them, two of them are gone, but you get Vegeta, Vegeta or Gogeta. Uh, uh, you know, same yeah. thing with you see what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, oh, I don't get me hyped. Don't get me hyped. All right, let me just finish. Let me just finish. 
All right, yeah. so like stuff like that, and on top of it, like think about it. Like, um, when you have these NFTs, then that adds a level a level of gaming aspect to it. It's like who has the most like Vegitos or Gogeta, and you could have it like a power ranking system. Like, I got Vegito, I got Goku, I got Kid Boo, I got I can go on for days. Like, what what do you think about stuff like that? <laughs> Yeah, uh, so this this is really going into the gamification, um, and we will see more and more of this coming in FIV. Um, just you know, to start with, that you know, NFT will interact. We have tried it out. I think the audience earlier mentioned uh, the Ghostbusters with the Slimer and the Ghost Trap. Uh, we will be bringing more out, and I do understand when you put the two together, you kind of burn the two and you get another limited edition one. Uh, yeah, it is definitely a possible. Uh, the, the the biggest thing uh, for us uh, right now, obviously we've got a lot of things we need to fix up before we uh, implement these. Is, um, one one of the major thing is that um, we, we need to ensure that our audience um, are able to accept that you know what what you don't want to do is when we were a kid you play you used to play with marbles you bring a bag of marble to school and you play for you know uh, for keeps right and you you go home with an empty bag of marbles so we just want to make sure the people who is participating will understand you know the the, the game and how how this will evolve so we'll definitely look look at it i mean it's a great idea for sure Awesome. I appreciate that. Who who you up, man? Yeah, David, congratulations for everything that you're doing. This has been an amazing ride, you know, and I definitely want to say congratulations on a happy birthday as well. Um, just real quickly, wanted to ask you, where do you see the largest trend currently going in NFTs? As you know, there's different spaces. We were just talking about it. There's the fine art, the digital art space. Um, there's as well as the niche now with the licensed branding, which you guys are probably doing the best in as far as my estimation right now. Um, where do you see the potential growth and um, the biggest ROI trends currently? Yeah, um, that's a real good question. And I, I'm, I'm just going to be honest uh, here. I mean, we we started off as an underdog project because everyone laughed at us to go, well, these brands would never come in to NFT. And I just want everyone to understand it's a very, very hard entry level for this game, what we are doing. The licensing game is extraordinary hard. Uh, number one is to gain trust. And number two is eventually what we want to see is all our assets or at least the metadata of the NFT you own is interruptible into other platforms. And as you guys all know, when we come into this, uh, early, the, the major player is Depp Labs, which came, they had the Crypto Kitty came in, they evolve into the NBA Top Shop today. And they will have other games, similar NFT project out there. So they're all about the moving images. And then you have the Animalka who really into the, you know, other things like Sandbox. You have the Central Land, which is now becoming more NFT and, and other relate, related matters. And, and now you have a lot of marketplaces popping up. And I think Coinbase announced, uh, and that's a, very great welcoming and I believe eBay will be in the NFT business of helping aggregating, transacting. So you have all these major platforms out there. Now you need assets to be sitting on. And I know what has been extraordinarily popular has been these avatars, these one-off avatars. And some of them are very cool. Don't get me wrong. Um, but uh, where we see emerging coming out is really you know, uh, gamification, you know, where NFTs have other utility value, where I, go, I believe that it's going to be the biggest uh, growth phase coming up. Because apart from owning that avatar, what do you want it? Do you want it to grow old? Do you want it to evolve? Do you want it to, um, you know, you put two together, become something else? And this is something constantly with Phoebe is that we are trying to be as innovative as we possibly can. And just so everyone understands, it is already very hard to get all the existing IP owner to live in the same space. Um, you guys know your showroom can have Batman and Superman and all the other characters. That's how it evolves in the real world of collecting. You'll never put your Marvel or your DC um, 
toys collectible separately. Uh, you, you, you move them together because they're all superheroes. So what we have done uh, in Vivi, we, we like to explain to people is that it is very complex on the licensing. And we do believe that apart from owning these digital collectible, you can take photos with it. It's about the utility. What can you do afterwards with these? And gamification is where a big sector of the NFT will be going. But there's other ways. Um, and, you know, there's there's a lot of other projects out there. They are brilliant. And they, they focus completely different type of things. Um, and I, I think uh, overall, I'm really, really pleased that the industry is going to be, I'm pretty sure, uh, it's going to be here to stay. It's just so, you know, having Coinbase on, it's just a remarkable uh, decision for them. And they really believe it's a big thing. Um, and, you know, we're quite bullish about that as well. Awesome. Appreciate it. Non-fungible, the legend. What's going on, brother? Hey, thank you for having me up here, man. Pineapple gang. What's up, David? Oh, man? what's up? I appreciate gang. everything. Yeah, man, I appreciate everything, and, you know, it's always good talking to you, and I'm finally glad to, you know, be up here in the spaces. And I do have one question, too. You know, this is a little bit different, but, you know, I made the AR only token, and I want to complete the trade with you. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, I, I, I need to tell you guys, I, I have not been able to go into my Instagram and check every message. I will be probably this weekend. Or, or uh, during this week, uh, I, I got about three or four thousand messages I need to reply. Uh, it's a uh, yeah, so uh, I will I'll hit you up uh, on the private message there for sure. Awesome, Rebel Duck, what's going hey, on? Was that hey, it? Was that sure, it? Man. Um, Yo, I fungible, appreciate you for real, man. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Awesome, that's it. Awesome. You know, I, I know, like, you know, they're working hard and doing everything they can to make sure that VV is doing what it needs to do, man. I appreciate it all. Thanks. Thank you. Already, bro. Already. We're going to bounce into the audience. Appreciate you having, coming, bro. Hey, uh, Crypto Cocky. Thank you for uh, having me up. Uh, number uh, one. Come on, Rebel. Hey, no. I, I learned from you with facilitation of spaces. I, I do that in my real life to facilitate, and I learn every day from you. Sincerely, you, I appreciate it, brother. you throw these spaces like no one's business. I really appreciate it. I appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. It means a lot. Appreciate it. And happy birthday, David, and to all VV. This is pretty awesome. Uh, that's that's the, uh, pretty awesome. And also, this is kind of a dream that I'm actually talking right now to David Yu because I had this thought back when I was first researching whether I should – be involved with VV or Ecomi. So I did my research. As you know, I'm, I, I analyze a little too much sometimes. So, but what I do is I analyze, I watched every single video of David, Dan, Reese. I watched them all. And what hooked me completely was when David talked about his moment with collecting with a family member, how it forever will have that moment of a collectible. And I was like, I'm done. I'm in. Because my brother with a Star Wars, I would go across the brook and I lost my stormtrooper and I made him lose a stormtrooper in the brook. Okay, that's wrong story. <laughs> but the but we ended up going to enjoy talking about collectibles for the rest of our lives how we connected had moments with each other that to this day it does not matter whether it's physical or digital i'm i'm, I'm as soon as you said that about your brother or your I, I can't remember exactly but i'd love for you to talk a little bit about your passion for collecting and where it came from because that Really, I'm I'm there a thousand percent. So I'll hush and I'll appreciate you and everybody. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, okay, so my my passion of star collecting came very very young age. I I, I want you guys to understand. Uh, I mean, th it's not something I tell everyone. So you you know, I hope you guys um, you know th th we this opportunity. I'll tell you a little bit of story about how I started. 
Um, I started doing stamp collecting when I was a kid, and I, at, at a very young age, I was very entrepreneurial. Um, and if if any of you used to collect stamps, you you know you cut them off the envelope, you soak them in the bath, and the stamp basically you know appears off. And what I will do is I will dry them up, and when I dry them up, I will start sorting them out into sets, into colors, or um, how they should be. Now, the most important bit is what I was looking for. I was looking for stamps that hasn't had the stamp mark on it, which means the machine that was going through sorting it, it they didn't put a stamp mark on it. And what I will do is I will use a glue stick, and I will basically put glue stick in the back of the stamp, and I will go up and down uh, my street, my neighborhood, and selling the stamps as if they were you uh, not used, if they were mint stamps. Now, that's how my little miniature career started uh, into stamp collecting, and it got me really hooked in. And how my business whole started was that I start selling the excess stamps and I put them in the little pack of um, like a souvenir pack and in New Zealand it, it's a huge tourist attraction and what I would do is I will go to the local sta- stationery shop and get them to photocopy these cards onto an A4 paper and I'll fold them twice so they become little A, I think A5 size and I'll put the little pack of stamp on them I'll, on Friday nights instead of going out I will be going into the city, got on the bus, back full of stamps, and basically I will do go to every souvenir shop and I, I will do what I call my consignment run and I will swap them out. So the stamps um, in, in the corner, they, they give me a little rack. They put, my, they put my stamp pack on on the shelf. I will swap them around and, you know, we'll tally up 50-50. And that's how I started to fund my hobby. So I was a little bit of trader. Now, what happened was uh, in the mid-90s, I think about 96 and 97, and this is going through huge in basketball car and trading car and Warhammer. The money I had made, I kind of bought a lot of the stock of a a comic shop uh, in the city went under. And the, the comic company in New Zealand called Mark One Comic, the distributor, a company called Unicorn Distributor went went bankrupt, and I bought some of the products in the receiver uh, in the auction, basically. And I think I had about sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars, and I bought. They given me about six or eight cartons of a uh, product without seeing it. So it's like storage war. You don't see what's in it. They go, okay, sixteen hundred dollars. You can have that corner, that six or eight box. I didn't have a car then, so I. I had to call a taxi fan. So I picked it up, you know, drove back to my parents' house. I opened it up. And the six or seven boxes was all like Star Wars, Looney Tunes, Max, Star Trek, this and that. It was amazing novelty items and giftwares. I found a shop in in Auckland, um, and the guy's name's by Steve, Steve Park. And he had a souvenir store he bought all the stuff of me and i think he gave me like six thousand dollars for it so i quickly like three x my money and in, in that little deal and then i went back to the liquidator and i bought more and what happened was the six thousand dollars of stuff i bought and i think i must got stuck with about 20 or 30 grand of retail product and it were just role-playing books warhammer figures dungeons and dragons that and this and that and basically I couldn't sell it. And that's how I started set up my first business in about 96, 97. Um, And this is, by the way, this is where I first met Dan about 97. Dan, uh, the CEO of uh, Phoebe, you guys would know him. Um, He basically built my first Fagabond website, my first shop. Um, I was so poor then. Um, The true story was I did a deal with Dan where um, the the deal was I told Dan I couldn't afford to pay for the website, but I will do a contra so he can take fifty percent in cash and fifty percent in board games or stocks in my shop, and we did that. And ever since we kept in touch, 
But going down to my career of collecting basically started from the Pokemon cards that I sell. I bought them, Magic the Gatherings, um, and from one thing lead to another. Uh, my my collection, owning a retail shop, you you build up a whole thing. But most important, what you had mentioned is that I see. Uh, I, I see families, I see kids come in my shop. And I tell you why I love the business so much and I, why I still have the shop today is sometime in our shop, in the business that we're in, our allocations for some of these products are very limited. For example, uh, basketball car has been extremely popular. Pokemon has been extremely popular. Yu-Gi-Oh! you only get allocated a certain amount of these products. And we're talking about 20 boxes, okay? 20 packs of 20 boxes. And you make nothing out of them. You make about $10 or $5. So if you sell all 25 of them, you'd be lucky to make a couple hundred bucks profit. It doesn't even pay for your power bill or your, you know, for the whole month. But what was most important thing was when we were selling the product to the kid or the parent over the counter, you see the smile on people's face. I, I tell you, that moment is when we tell ourselves to go, this is why we do it. We are delivering something, a joy for them to take away. And the afterlife of that product and the utility, you know, when they bring it home, what, what the joy they get out of it, it's another level. So the industry, I, I, I've been very extraordinarily lucky to be in an industry where I put smile on people's face and that is actually the most important bit and you know the last 25 years being the business i'm in it allowed me to travel to conventions exhibitions and you know sometime i will turn up there and i'll come back with more stock or more things than i actually went out to get and you know oh, and, and that's how it really started uh, my collecting really started from the business I'm in. You guys here? Yes. Uh, yeah, we. Yeah. What's the name of this your store, your business? Uh, the store is Vagabond Games. That was a great. Yeah, that was an amazing that, story. story. No, thank yeah. you, Man, thank you for sharing, David. That was that was beautiful. And you saying that, David, we will probably demand that we have this the exact replica of this building drop down as a centerpiece in the VV VV world. Because other than that, <laughs> then I'm I'm gonna have to get some tickets because now I have to go to this store now. Like that store, yeah. Made, we have to go there. You know what I mean? And I, I, I tell you about the, the store and why we built uh, the Phoebe the way we built it is that in, in back of my shop, um, there, there's gaming tables, there's trestles tables out there. Uh, kids come in, like I say, any weather, any time. Uh, you will come in. You don't know one in, uh, one. You don't know anyone there, but you will walk away at the end of the day. You make new friends in my store because you speak the same language. You communicate uh, the same thing. You have the same interest and the same hobby. And that's basically why we had built Phoebe the way we had built it. It's all about the community and it's all about that drive uh, because we are all in it in, for the same thing, you know? And, and you know, uh, unfortunately, uh, when you become a family, you, you do have arguments just in like real life because you, you missed out a job, uh, your brother's got, got the collectible you won in the pack, it, it will happen in, in real life in Fiji, and that's what we're experiencing. Um, yeah. And But I, I, I rest assure you, everything we're trying to do is really going back to how, how being true to our collectors and being true to our fans, that's what we want to do. Yeah, well, hopefully these spaces that, that you guys pop in aren't on a, on a disappointment and we're we're holding up our end of that end of that deal, man. Um, I'm gonna try Thank to bring you. a little. You're welcome, man. I'm gonna try to bring a little bit more order um, in here. OVR, we have you next. If you have not answered or, or asked David a question, can you please um, click on your name and raise your hand? There'll be a little hand icon. If you click on that heart with the plus on it, 
all the way to the far right, there should be an icon to raise your hand just so I can get a little order of who hasn't asked the question yet. Um, I'm, I think I know the order. So we got OVR, um, then we got Eduardo, then we got Marcus, then we got Clutch, then Taps, then I'm going to lay low. So go all right, ahead, go first, ahead, off, first off, can you hear me? Yes, yes sir. All right, I want to thank Dan for creating this uh, this space we have right here. I know that our, our, our host, or our co-host is actually Crypto Khaki, but what I mean is thank you for creating everything that it is that we cherish so much these days and for the days to come. Um, because without your vision, we wouldn't even have this space. You know, my, my brother Crypto Khaki and, and Propaganda and Nexus and all of us wouldn't have been on here for 12 hours straight if you didn't give us something to look forward to each and every day of our lives, right? So I'll start off with that. And, uh, and, and by Dan, and, he means David, David, <laughs> just so you know. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yep. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. Did I, did I say Dan? Yes. Yeah, one the same, bro. It's all the same, I hope bro. I hope it's I didn't. Good. I hope I I hope I didn't because I know who you are, David. I definitely do. It's all good. Um, but we get nervous, right? We're we're human. Um, no right. bots here. No bots here. Um, but so these so these are so these are my questions. Um, uh, I got three of them. You can choose to pick from any one of them if you can answer any one of them or all of them if you wish. But my first one is. Uh, will the VV verse be AR or VR based or both? My second question is, um, are y'all looking into a photo album for us that like to take pictures? Because I know we're maxed out at 60. And my third question is, um, are y'all guys considering, I, I actually already know the answer to this question, but are y'all considering AI NFTs? And what I mean by that is artificially intelligent NFTs. Yeah. Um, uh, by the way, these three questions are all very good questions. Um, now, we really do believe in wearable device. Um, I, I, I think we will be a mixed reality where, you know, you can use your phone to walk into this metaverse or you, um, and you can use your computer. The idea is uh, we do want to have some sort of wearable in your head and around your eye. It could be all these new glasses that's coming out, which is more, uh, you know, AR style. Um, so that's not that one. Um, the second question you asked was, uh, what was that again? Just quickly. Yeah, like a photo album. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, 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 that one. That, yeah, that one. I do need to bring it up with Dan. He's more of the UI UX uh, genius on it, and he understands how much we can take. So I won't answer that one, but I will definitely bring it up to him. Uh, we are going to be looking to. As, as we all know, we are in the process of scaling the app. Um, you know, we're working with AWS closely to scale and everything and our bandwidth across the whole world. So that's definitely being a topic for discussion. And the AI NFT, um, we are going to be looking into it. Right now, we are not uh, designed fully function with AI, but it's something that have, have been brought up to our attention the last couple of months. Um, we are looking into it, and hopefully, yeah, uh, I de definitely, like I mentioned earlier, it's all about utility value. So we'll try to add as much as we can into it. And on that note, uh, Mr. Mr. David, bless you on your continued success, and thank you. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Appreciate that, OVR. Um, Eduardo, you up, bro? All right. Um, okay, go ahead, man. I, I got you. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was looking the pictures. So I have some things to say, like, uh, let's say, five things. First will be if we can get inside of the comic, it will be nice. Second, um, if on the iPhone, if they can fix the the glitch when you send a message, and um, the other guy freezes. So if I send a message to one person on the BB app, I can freeze his phone for like five seconds. So maybe someone can troll. Okay. Okay. That I uh, will. I'll bring that up with Daniel for sure. Okay. Uh, okay. Three one. It will be if. If they can be automatic refreshing on the screen, because uh, I'm, I move 
too much my <laughs> my little finger on the screen. <laughs> yeah. Just to refresh the screen. Uh, another thing is if we can add the the how to like find minds when let's say you're sleeping and and you and your phone says oh mine 2021 is is on the market. <laughs> Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I think awesome. uh, uh, the yeah, a lot of these one, the tech side, uh, Dan is aware of, and we just uh, been a little bit tight on resource. And I think a um, couple of the thing has been on the priority. So I, I, I will need to check out, but please do uh, stay tuned. I think we do roll out multiple updates a week, sometime even more. Um, so yeah, continue to update your phone. The awesome. app, I appreciate that. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, man. Uh, Clutch, go ahead, man. Hey, man. What's up? Um, What's going on, bro? I just had two questions. I was going to ask um, these AMAs, like, how long do we plan on doing them for? Like, in like five years, are we still going to be doing AMAs? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we we quite like AMA. Um, I mean, it does. Um, it, it, I guess it's a good way for us to reach out to our audience. Um, we are going to, um, yeah, we 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 might do AMA and meet in our Phoebe first one day. You know, coming up. So yeah, yeah. yeah. so it's going to be very different. Okay, nice. And I wanted to ask. Uh, I I wasn't able to catch the last AMA. So, was there any um, update on the MTO? Uh, yeah, we basically have finalized uh, all the connecting. I think we're doing some testing coming week um, internally. And then, yeah, then we'll start selecting the first batch of um, users. Um, yeah, and we'll go from there. All right, yeah. dope. Clutch, pre- yeah, appreciate it, Clutch. Taps, what's going on, man? Taps. Big influencer in the land. You got the stage, brother. Hey, hey. Uh, well, awesome job. Mad respect, Kaki, for championing on for this long. That's incredible. Um, ah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, and, and David, congrats on one year. You know, amazing first year and uh, happy to be a part of the community and, and to be a part of the success or at least watch it, right? So um, my question, and apologies if it comes off a little bit heavy, I was on a stream earlier today. And someone was kind of like, hey, you know, you, you speak about all the positives, but what are some potential flaws that you see and like that? And I had to kind of rack my brain. And the only thing I would kind of think of, and Trevor was kind of speaking about it too, is, you know, with, you know, tons and tons of licensors on the backlog and so many different things on your guys' plates and, you know, design houses, how many, of the, how many things are just kind of on the backlog? Mm-hmm. As you guys continue to scale and grow, it's just going to get even more so, right? So... I guess my question is, you know, why do you guys choose to be or run this lean? I know agile is important, but are you guys looking to double headcount, add more developers to continue to scale? Or I guess what's the reasoning for running yeah. the lean? Okay. Um, so, so uh, 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 great question. So what happened was last year uh, we ran our funding. Uh, well, we, we didn't run out completely. We, we basically, um, uh, if, if we didn't mention this before, we were around, myself and Dan, before we came back to New Zealand, uh, we were at San Francisco. Uh, you know, days before it got locked down, we were there to see uh, venture capitalists. And uh, we didn't see any of them at the end. Uh, I think maybe one or two. And then we had to fly back because everything was just closing down the borders. So during the 220, the entire year, we basically were on shoestring budget. Uh, in fact, uh, we could only carry X amount of uh, work and we were o- already over resource, um, you know, tight resource with what we had and funding and talents and everything. Now, about two thousand end of two twenty, uh, we had to make make a decision to either uh, rate uh, do a new race at a very very cheap variation, or we go live. One of our advisors basically told us, "Hey, why don't you go live and just see how you 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 guys do?" 
Uh, and just keep in mind, we've been negotiating licenses going back to 2018, 19, when we say, you know, really go in the project. Um, and a lot of these licenses still didn't kind of understand well, what it is. I mean, you're almost like throwing a net out there and you try to catch some fish coming back. And we didn't yield very well, right? Because no one understand what NFT was. And now moving to 2021, when we launched in January, we had a very small test use group and they were predominantly the originally, original OMI holders who contributed to uh, our project when we did a small IEO run. Now we invited them in and I need to be very honest, when we opened the flag gate, the, the download, it went from almost zero to where we are around the eight, 900,000 uh, user mark. During this whole process, uh, and remember, we don't actually get paid by Apple until the following month. You know, if you know how business workers, they click your money at the end of the month, they tally up, and they, they pay you the following month on the 15th. So we, we were always constantly about 60 days behind. Um, and we had to ensure that um, our employees and external contractors uh, and service provider to keep our lights on. So those were going out. And we, we, we could not, we, you know, we were not as profitable as people think that, you know, selling these NFT is super profitable. They, they not, there's a lot of costs behind it to, to keep the AW server on, to keep, uh, and having the retention of customer. And we had about, I think, three months scaling issue. You know, our app was originally designed to be, uh, have about 60,000 users by the end of this year. I think about 60, 65,000. Now, uh, that 800,000 download after uh, really um, brought to our attention that we need to scale, like you say, on the resource. Uh, it's only been the last 90 day we have brought on more talent. And I, I rest assure you the team have tripled from where we were last year uh, and where we were beginning of this year. And we will be going through another... Uh, scaling coming up uh, but what I wanted to ensure um, our user mainly is that we want to bring the best of the talent in that field that we can and we try to run this business um, as agile as possible and I do also need to let everyone know is that the licensor only want to deal with either myself or Daniel. You know, we are the key people and they, they don't really want to speak to a second tier. They want to know how we're going to execute, how we're going to deliver and when we're going to deliver. And that's basically all these multinational. They want to ensure that they become relevant in the industry and they become relevant in the VV app and how that experience is going to translate. Um, we do have a huge external uh, agencies, multiple of them, are working with Trevor, uh, pumping out designs and work. And also do keep in mind, this NFT really blown off around, I think, April, May. And a lot of our contract uh, licensor who didn't on board last year suddenly all came on board all at once. So we suddenly have a whole back backlog. I mean, just like any business, um, and especially when I talk to Dan and my vision with my team is that uh, I believe how we're going to be running this business is quite structured. We go from one, seven, seventeen, seventy, three hundred rule is I always tell Dan is that, you know, when we start as a startup, we have one person and then we're going to grow from the seventh employee, the seventh hire, then 17, the 70. And from that 17 employee, you're going to jump to 300. How are we going to be shaping each category when we move up? You know, when do we bring in our HR manager? When do we start, stop our sourcing work? When do we build our own studio uh, to retain all those work in-house? In uh, but right now, you know, we have found the easiest and the fastest way is to outsource a lot of these. So in, in terms, when you talk about, are we running lean in the executive level? Yes, we are. But in the... And, and basically in the bottleneck where outsourcing, doing designs, coming up with innovative ideas on graphic, characters, strategy, we do have a ton of uh, creative out there doing that. Um, but yeah, I, and I'm just being very candid and transparent. 
where we were last year and where we were expecting this year, it's a huge different gap. I think I had to go back to my raw map two, three times and I had to relook at my figures three, four times. And every time I put in a new figure where I want to pinpoint, we we just super pass that in, within weeks. That's amazing. Thank you so much for the transparency and, and being so candid. That's really cool story. Basically like bootstraps to uh, red bottom. So <laughs> thanks yeah. so much. Yeah, straight up. Right, straight up. Uh, okay, so we got Marcus. Um, I'm going to lay low. And at any time, David, I know we passed your 30. That's all right. Man, we're, you know what I'm saying? We, this, is, this is amazing here. So, But at any time, I'm willing to put that ax in. And, and, you know, we just yep. love the fact that you're here. No problem. You know, interacting with us. So no pressure at all. All right, so Marcus, um, you up next, man. And then I'm going to lay low. Okay, I'm going to lay low. We'll come back to Marcus. You can go ahead and jump out, bro. Hey, what's up, everyone? First of all, I want to say congratulations to BB Team. Uh, I'm here from Mexico listening to this uh, uh, live session. It's really, really uh, amazing to have all the community join here and talk about BB. I personally, I'm not a collector. Like, I haven't been, since, but now I am since BB, so I'm happy for that. So um, I got just a question. Um, it's about more about the BB verse, and um, we're happy if you have uh, anything to say about that. Um, I'm an artist, producer. I've been DJ for like almost 10 years, and I have been talking to BB with all my friends, you know, like in the studio. I'm that guy when we're recording, and I'm just taking my NFTs like, hey, Ben, check this out. And we were talking, and you, you know, like, and I, we were asking questions like, Will BB Bird will be a place like for artists to make things for community? Maybe I don't know, like stages or uh, have you thought about that idea? Or maybe I'm just like thinking yeah. too much. I no, don't... thank thanks for being part of us. Um, and I this, listen, my my dream for BB Bird is going to be much grandier than what we can build today. I need to be very honest because I, I you know, I. You know, I dream really big, both myself and Dan dream really big. Uh, but how we're going to be rolling out is we're going to be doing them in stages um, where, you know, the number one focus will be your showroom, where what we're going to be calling that as your home and how you interact with one another. And then we'll be growing that space to a bit bigger. Um, I think I mentioned we wish to have exhibitions where community could come together and one day the AMA will be probably high also in the meter first where the VV first will have an auditorium where people can come participate and there could be screens up there more than just what is a uh, voice and slowly um, just going back to your point is that will we be allowing all these other external talent to be publishing things yeah I mean it is our dream to do all that uh, but we just need to make sure that we are rolling them out at the right time and in a good manner uh, and just ensuring that everything's going to work. And I, I don't want to promise the whole world because I know Dan's going to be calling me after this AMA and go, what did you promise them? So just to go back, stage one, we're just going to make sure that home, your showroom is going to be represented well in there. And then idea is to run small community events and grow from there. That sounds great. That sounds awesome because yeah, I'm an awesome, artist as well. Awesome. So. Yeah, awesome, man. Um, we do have, I do want to apologize to the people that are in the crowd with their hands up. I am trying my best to fast speed through this as well. Um, but the order, as you raise your hand and you request, it gets jumbled up. Um, and I think I've been pulling people up based off of who's next on the row, but that I'm, I'm, I'm getting messages in a DM saying that they've had their hands up for 30 minutes. So I do completely apologize for that. Um, so if we could, if, if, you know, if we could just bear with me, um, cause I'm, I'm really trying to memorize all of these names as they pop up. It is, it is a lot going on. So I do want to apologize for that. Um, for sure. Um, next up we got, um, Above a cash, then we'll do player one, um, and then dialing. All right. Um, how's it going, fellas? I just want to say congratulations on your one-year mark. 
David and Hobie Beavers. Um, I'm kicking myself right now because I was around for when the Batman Black and White, the, that ultra rare, like it was out, you know, for weeks, and I was debating whether to get it or not. And now it's just out of the question, completely. So, uh, you know, um, you know, it's obvious, you know, that that it's so popular now, VV, and I'm I'm glad to be a part of it right now. With the comic books, is just a great addition, and um, um, I'm loving that right now. But um, I was just curious as to if one day the VVverse will ever transition over to the consoles. Ah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you never know. I mean, uh, where, where we go from here, uh, you know, it's something I will bring it up. Uh, but in the short term, definitely, we haven't got enough resource or bandwidth um, to execute that. Um, but you know, you, you never know um, what what goes on. You know, we'd love to be on TV. You know, uh, as definitely, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Next up, player one. Hey, David. Um, congrats, happy birthday. Hey, from a personal perspective, it really was a high honor and privilege to uh, hear your origin story there. As a fellow entrepreneur, I I completely understand. Like but can understand the magnitude of the struggles you guys go through. So thank you to the team and all the hard work you guys do. Um, my question was, have you had a chance to look at that Marvel present you guys got yesterday and give us an update? Oh, yeah, I, I, I got it. I'm going to put it on my Instagram. Um, I, I do have to say, uh, it, it was I got a couple of comments came in. Um, I think I mentioned it yesterday on the AMA. I thought it was a, a book I ordered on Amazon arrived. And my staff handed it to me. I go, oh, God, that book I paid for 25 bucks is only like half an inch thick. Um, and I left it on the table and I opened it yesterday while having a coffee break. It was uh, one of a, uh, a, a super rare comic. I had two cam. Uh, one was a celebration of Stan Lee that was only given out in the Comic Con New York 2019 on the 19th of October, I think. Uh, they only did few copies of it. And the other comic I got is Fearless number three, Ferian cover, one of 25 ever made. It's like ultra rare. It even has a little card inside. So I'll definitely have to put it on my um, Instagram. And I tell you, I, I can say this. I did go on Google, try to search for that cover, for that artwork. You couldn't find it. So it must be extru- extremely rare. So... I'll be showing it off um, on the my IG later on today for sure. Awesome, awesome, Marcus. Are you back, man? If not, we'll go to Dylan. Hi, David. Hi, thank you for taking my question. Yeah, I just have a few things um, I want to kind of get some information on. Uh, so I think you actually answered this a couple times, but are you or Dan going to be going to Decon? Like you, you, you yourself or Dan? going to be at decon uh, no yeah i mean not not this year our, okay. our biggest uh issue right now is um uh, you know if me and dan we're going back a long time um i mean we we've been generally trying to stay in the same city or same time zone uh for a long time and we both wish we could go up but the problem is we couldn't come back in to the border at the moment so we just need to be quite respectful on you know the commitment that we have but you know we'll there's going to be so many other events coming up i do believe alex noah uh trevor and reese will be at decom anaheim we are going to be running some double pass vip ticket there will be multiple double pass coming up uh, running in uh, i think either on twitter or one of our social media so please do keep your eye out on those double pass tickets and we will have a physical stand at Decon. Uh, the stand's not going to be super flash. So I just want everyone to understand that it is one of the first few events that is open to, you know, uh, people again. Um, and with the limited time, what we have, uh, it's really going to be a bit of swap meet. I did promise uh, our team that I will be sending 
uh, the Ron English Grim Rabbit, a Chrome set uh, up to Anaheim to be displayed in our booth. Um, and I think we hopefully will be doing some physical giveaway as well. Um, during that whole weekend, uh, three-day event, we're going to be dropping lots of artists, um, a lot of new onboard one as well. Um, so do keep your eye out for the calendar when it's available. Okay, yeah. Awesome. Um, awesome. Sorry, could I ask one more or do you want to jump to the next person? No, right, right quick. Um, yeah, so I don't want to get too technical, but um, one of my questions was with regards to the Immutable platform. Um, do you want to comment anything about why you chose Immutable with Immutable being such a young platform, relatively new, maybe untested in some aspects? Do you have any yeah. concerns with your scalability that you're bringing, all, all your new... Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, um, thanks for asking. I mean, uh, this is more uh, Dan's side of thing uh, okay. in our CTO. We we look at things, um, when, when we do deals, um, we, we look at many things. We look at, um, like you mentioned, the scalability, the experience. Uh, do keep in mind, the immutable team um, did start off as uh, Gods Unchained as one of the games that they've done. So they do have a lot of experience in terms of understanding what's required out there. And I, I need to be honest, you know, the, the, the blockchain world, I mean, we're moving in the crypto world, moving extraordinarily fast. Every six or seven months, there's something else come out. When we first chose GoChain, it was simply because it was an advice from one of our advisors to go on. And we just don't see that technology fit for what we need to do to carry on forward from here. So constantly we will be referring, you know, what is the best fit for our business in terms of commercial deal? What is best fit with our licensed source? Uh, because our licensed source need to trust these blockchain to, for these assets to be sitting on. And like you say, you know, without trialing that, uh, we will not see what the issue is and what the problem is. And, like like any of the young startup, we love to give people opportunity. There's a lot of blockchain out there. We've been approached by almost everyone that we know of, from you know, from Flow, Polygon to um, Tezos. We we've been connected with around the world with blockchain technology provider. And you know, one one day, you know, you know, we 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 possibly will see a number of changes as we grow as a company. Oh, amazing man all right t my g you up next then we got redneck then we got dan um we'll keep those three and then we'll we'll follow it up after that t what's going on what's man? up what's up what's up i just had a um, up, question about like the comic books on the app so for like the daredevil comic book i know that it was a um new york comic-con exclusive but when I look at the mint numbers, it doesn't say like C E and then the mint number for the comic books. So I don't know if you guys already talked about that, but like, I was wondering. Ah, sure. Okay. We'll C E. Yeah. Okay. Those. Uh, I will find out for you and see if we're going to put a C E, uh, next to their, um, their number. Um, I'll bring that up. Um, thank you for being such a, you know, spot on, on detail. Um, uh, we'll, you know, we'll probably do an announcement if we do do an upgrade on it. Thank you. Uh, awesome. Appreciate that. All right. Next up. What's cracking right, family? How are we doing tonight? Thanks David for taking our question. So thanks. My, my question is going to be more on the business side of the things. Um, I'm an old dot com head that retired and then got back into this stuff. Unfortunately, using uh, VV was one of them. Um, so I'm I'm in it. I've been in it. I don't have a ton of stuff. I only got a few sets and some collectibles, but I'm playing. So my concerns are, from a business standpoint, you have more IP than anyone else. I clearly see the vision but knowing the dot com world and knowing how fast, as you described, it's moving, and also to dovetail off the second gentleman's question before, um, you're, you're kind of in a position where it's almost like you're playing with new people, but also being looked at by old people, i.e., all of your stuff sitting on AWS. 
are you going to be able to maintain the beast while riding on them and also still grow yourself before you actually get forced into a position of sell or expand a little bit faster than you want to? And I think I, I know you have things you can't say, but I, I hope you can at least push upon this some some re uh, some energy for me to keep a hold of. Thank you for your time. Yeah, th- yeah. Thank you for that. Um, so, um, you know, if you heard early on about my story, uh, I've been in the retail for 25 years. And that store that I started in 1996, 97, I still own and control the chain 100%. I'm not a com- um, I, I'm not a flipper. I'm you know, uh, you know. I I run business from day one, and I, I I go all the way as deep as I can. Obviously, the business that we are in now, um, blockchain or NFT, is a very fast moving aspect. From our commercial side of business, it's all about scaling and in- ensure that uh, we can meet our milestones. We are looking to open additional offices once. Um, you know, this pandemic is over that we will, you will see us have presence in almost every continent eventually. That's where we see it. Um, AWS just is one of our many, many providers. And, you know, we do not allow any of our providers to walk over us. And trust me, um, we review every position every time. Um, they, they work perfect for us right now. Uh, and they're a good partner because, a lot of synergy and they're putting a lot of their resource in their hand to help us to grow as well. We we never go through just like any startup and we face many problems in speed, latency, like what people have been talking about, bots and all that. And we just need time to fix these issues up. Uh, we, we do have a lot of good advice from companies out there that provide these type of service and we are new to it. I mean, if if you sit down with me and Dan, and if, if we we're just in a coffee or in a bar, and truthfully, you know, we just wanted to build a little app that sells some digital NFT collectibles. I just want to sell Batman. That's what we wanted to do. We didn't know uh, things was going to be selling out 0.1 of a second and having like 1.5 million uh, data calls on Amazon every second. We, we didn't know that. I mean, honestly... Um, you know, you guys, the community have over, you know, you know, beyond our expectation where we are today. And I want to thank you guys all. And, you know, and that that's why I wanted to be in here today to just listen and talk to you guys all in a smaller group um, and answer some of these questions. Uh, rest assure you that we do have a long map um, and we do see flaws in our system. And we also do have a lot of innovations and dreams that we want to build in here. And we're not going to be quitting or selling to someone um, so so that dream can be shelved elsewhere. Sheesh. Man, love it, love it. Eric, uh, Dan, Dan, you, Dan, then Eric, um, then Noel, then Crypto Wizard. Well, thank you so much for letting me speak. David, uh, I appreciate everything you've done for the community. And, you know, you saying that you really care about the community. I mean, the fact that you're here spending time in this, you know, Twitter room and not doing a million other things, you know, in terms of development and licensing. I mean, that just shows that you don't you almost don't even need to say you're for community. You're actually exactly. for themselves. But, uh, you know, one of the things I'm very curious about, I'd love to kind of get your impression of this is I look at, uh, you know, my life. I started off as a Batman comic book collector when I was a little kid getting the print comics. You know, I remember the the Batman, you know, uh, Night's End series and, you know, with Bane breaking, you know, Batman's back. And that's like a huge childhood memory. And then like getting into Vivi, you know, I didn't, you know, a lot of my peers who were really successful were, you know, on open sea and getting, you know, buying all these NFTs for, you know, 10 Ethereum and all this stuff. And I'm like, that's a little complicated. And I don't know if this, you know, piece of art is going to exist in 50 years. But guess what? I know that Disney and Marvel and a lot of these, you know, licenses will exist, you know, after I'm dead. So what am I going to bet on? I'm going to bet on licenses over random NFTs that might not be around in the future. So that's originally how I justify getting in the community and, you know, investing and, 
one of the things that's even more fascinating to me, where this is where I want to get your view on, is my behavior in terms of not just getting the NFTs, for instance, you know, the first five seasons of Batman, but it's caused me to really think in a new way of, oh, wow, each NFT, their actual physical collectibles behind these. And so I bought nine of the statues in the past 48 hours because my hypothesis is that each of these Batman NFTs or any of these NFTs are representative of actual physical collectibles or comics. Therefore, each one is marketing the actual physical comic that is in itself a limited edition. Therefore, as VV becomes more successful and, you know, these series ones and everything that you produce, I mean, you have another 80 uh, in the Batman black and white collection to get out. I mean, if you intend to do that and therefore the physical items are extremely rare. I mean, there's like five for first editions, like 5,000 of each one. You can barely find any on eBay. Overall, there's yes. maybe 550 of all of them on eBay, and there's 5,000 for each one. So it's super rare. Uh, and so I think what's happening in terms of a larger trend that I'm seeing that I'd love to get your perspective on is the NFTs and virtual items and comics building demand for the physical ones. And if in the future you see the greater value having the NFT and the physical item selling as one. Yes. Um, great question. Because so, I would never, David, and I don't mean to cut you off, I would never think of buying, I, like I even think, I'm like, wow, I can't believe I'm buying these statues right now. Like I bought yeah. nine <laughs> in 48 hours. Like I would never, I mean, I'm like, you know, a 38 year old man. Like I never would think I would buy this, but it clicked in my head. Oh, Wow. These are going to be yeah. wiped out soon because of Vivi. All right, your thoughts. Yeah. You, you definitely need to write an email to DC and just say why you bought them so they understand. So uh, our partnership with DC Collectible started, uh, you know, was one of our first NFT job, as you understand. Now, the, the whole idea of the Batman Black and White is because they have been released for the last 14 or 15 years to get to where they are. I think they're up to Batman 101 or 102 now. Uh, we are committed. Uh, DC Collectible is committed to bring all these collectible out in, 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 you know, in the sequence where, where we see fit. Um, the physical world is very relevant and because obviously we all start from something and we all start from very physical. But I do have to tell you, Kids today, and you know my uh, my nephews, they live in a very different world. They start everything in their iPad now, um, and they're you know they are very digital savvy. Everything they they play in Roblox or uh, Fortnite, it's all digital. They will rather spend more money in upgrading a gear than than going out to buy a physical toy of it because they just go well that's a toy of a Fortnite, but it's not the Fortnite gear that you get in, in the game. So that, that you know, the market is shifting. The physical is definitely getting more and more rare, um, and it's very challenging because the supply of manufacturing. Part of what we're trying to do at Thievi, apart from trying to replicate what's already out there, is really to be relevant, bringing these subject coming back alive. Like you mentioned, uh, if the DC collectible partnership didn't happen, you know, these collectible toys will still be sitting in a mom and pop store, sitting collecting dust. Um, it's a way for this whole series to come back alive again. And we're seeing a huge interest in social um, and our licensors in DC constantly tell us, you know, they, you know, they, they are very impressed of what we do, especially Marvel. Uh, Marvel and us is almost hand in hand um, helping to grow the community and and really bringing it out um, I, I think all of you probably have seen Captain Carter that came out a week ago uh, during the New York Comic Con that's a Marvel Studio NFT collectible so everyone should know it does say it's Marvel Studio on it so you know our, our business and our IP providers are now breaching and uh, and reaching out to new areas where they see 
how they can be more relevant. And you know, the Captain Carter one, for example, you will know it's it's very hard for a toy company to bring out that toy for that specific reason or for the What If series. But in the digital world, we can quickly take it out, send it out, and distribute it all around the world in 180 countries that BB's in right now being used. Uh, it is very relevant that the physical, we see one day how you're going to bundle up with a digital one as well. Um, so we are trialing that with the the Ron English, the Rabbit Grimm, where you get the physical piece and you get the um, digital with it as a package. And that, you know, that will be one of our start in, in, the, in the collection of physical as, as well as digital. Just to show you, David, how crazy this has been, and I've scoured the whole internet trying to buy these stats. You cannot get a penguin. Any, I mean, it sounds like funny, but like they're yeah. wiped out. Look, go to Australia, it wiped out. But the other thing that's interesting, David, and then I'll let the next person talk, and I think this is really important, is each collectible, each comic serves as a marketing device for everything else. Meaning that, you know, even if it's listed in OpenSea or wherever off the app in the future, that is going to market VB. That is going to market all the other collectibles. That's going to market all the physical collectibles. So it's just, it's just like, just like everything you've done with the community, it just kind of bubbles and word of mouth and, and easily spread. What's special about this thing is I would, I'll tell you a quick little story. I was next to my girlfriend in Boston, in Copley, and I got her so pumped. She's like, I want to buy a Batman Todd. She's sitting next to me. She downloads the app in like a second. And she buys a Todd. She has like an iPhone 5 and buys the Todd in less than two minutes. Doesn't have a big tech background. And to me, the second that happened, I'm like, oh, this is big. She no, doesn't understand crypto. She even thinks crypto is a scam. Still bought it. And it took her almost no time. To me, that summarizes why I think this is going to be successful. Thank you. And by the way, that we, we think... And with DC, we will always talk about it. We think there's only three people or three sets, complete set of the Batman black and white. Uh, I think DC had one. Their chief creating officer had one. And I know there's one set up in Asia. Uh, you know, someone I know has a complete set of the black and white. So there's actually not many complete sets of that. And the whole point of why uh, it was relevant for DC to bring it out with us is that it gives the collectors an, a, a brand new opportunity to collect them in a digital format. Um, and yeah, we are committed. The comic, another another thing. I mean, the 1939, I have a copy, but I will never read my one because my one's in the CGC case. I will want to read them at any time and bring it and to share it. And now VV app allows me to do that. And do keep in mind, the secret rare, the ultra rare of that number one, it is very rare. It is the Marvel's first comic. It is the first NFT. Uh, remember, back in the 1939, they did run between 39, I think, to uh, 1940s, about, what was it, 880,000 copies of these. And there's only you know a few hands full of these around now. Um, and some of them have fetching up to two three million dollars so and it was i i can't remember how much it was back then maybe five cents uh five, you know or ten cents a copy um you know that itself is an nft in a different way it's a non-fungible you know token in a way in the physical world people are willing to pay whatever is value to them um so it's re it's quite amazing that some of these things are now spreading worldwide um and one major thing uh, I just want you guys to all to understand is the audience that we are capturing in VV is a huge global audience. Um, what took a while for a lot of our publishers and partners to understand is that we are now selling that comic book all around the world. So there will be people in Australia, Singapore, up in Mexico, in Ireland, Austria, um, all purchasing this, this digital comic. So the, the audience is going to continue to grow. And David, I hope you enjoy it. David, I think here's what's fascinating about Marvel Comics number one. So the reason why I got it is because I looked at eBay 
I looked everywhere around the world. I did my research and I said, oh my God, the most expensive comic ever sold was Amazing Fantasy. And you can actually buy it in not 9.8 condition in on eBay, but I think there's like a 9.2 and there's like a bunch of different ones with worse condition. There is not one Marvel Comics number one, like anywhere in the world, but you can get it in SR and very, you know, uncommon, rare, et cetera, condition on DV. So you actually have a chance to get it. Whereas with some of these other comics, even if they're even more popular, you can't get it. And therefore that dictated me, oh, wow, this thing is not only the first comic on VV, but this is something you really can't get. And therefore it, it, it's, it's something you can read where you couldn't really read before. And it's something special. Yeah. Um, there's yeah, none of the zero on that. eBay. Yeah, even the comments are very, it's going to be very hard to get in the bow year time. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Appreciate that. Uh, Eric. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Dan. All right. I got um, two uh, brief, quick questions, really. Uh, the first one is will there be like updates and like not patch notes, but like like just notes like so instead of uh medium articles and twitter announcements it'll be in app instead so like everything you just from the touch of vv app like you can pop up a screen that'll show the medium article of everything yeah um some someone did tell me that yesterday um yeah i think <clears throat> i think my own brother told me that yesterday he said wouldn't it be good if you just send me a notification for all these updates, so I know. So uh, we'll bring we'll bring it out for sure. Um, that's a good one. Yeah, and uh, that yeah, cause I would really really like that because a lot of people I try getting into VV, a lot of them don't even have Twitter. So I yes, mean, I don't yeah. know the the popularity or the age frame of people that use Twitter, but a lot of my close friends and family don't use Twitter, and I just send them links, and like they don't they they're not used to that, you know. Like, it'll be yeah, simpler if they just look in the app or they'll ask me questions. They're like, oh, how do I find what's coming or stuff like that? So, yeah. um, I mean, other... I, I mean, yeah, I mean, definitely um, we'll, we'll work on that. But just let you know, my hair has a Twitter account as well. So, yeah, you never know. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> the, the second question I got is, uh, this is more of a just kind of like wondering. Um, so... I'm wondering if for the the social the social like system in app, I'm wondering if it'll be upgraded before or after like the Viviverse is implemented. Because I know the Viviverse the Viviverse will be like huge, like and it'll have its own social yeah. system. So I'm wondering if we're gonna get like upgrades to the chat functions in the in the app that before w- that or after. Yeah, the, the, uh, this question I can't answer, I do need to re- uh, refer with Dan. Um, he has a calendar pipeline of what's more urgent uh, from top to bottom. But it is definitely on the list that we do need to upgrade it. Uh, it is coming. So uh, we'll, we'll let you know more. I, I couldn't answer that for you. Sorry. Awesome. That's okay. We appreciate it, man. Um, Noel, Ripper, then Crypto Wizard. No way yeah, there, but... hey, hey, everybody. Hey, David. It's very exciting to be speaking Hi. to you. First off, I want to say uh, happy birthday to Vivi. One year, it's a very big milestone. It's a very big accomplishment doing it successfully. I've been in Vivi since like April or March. It's been uh, something amazing experience. My cousins on it, my friends on it. And it's just uh, very amazing to see. And um, my question is, uh, we saw Ritmo go from a basic... Uh, nft to um to a animated one and yes yeah and uh you know superman is one amazing one you know i keep waiting for it i have four of them and i keep waiting for it to get animated if any chance you know just like a hint there because the community (laughs) will really love it it's one of the best like uh, superheroes out there as an nft yes uh, we, we, we do have a pipeline of uh, what, uh, what NFT is going to be upgrade. Uh, there, there will be an upgrade this month for one of the NFT. So I, I don't know what it is, but I know there's one in the works. Um, so you, you guys just, uh, it will be just turned on, on one day during this month. And hope, hopefully you guys will like it. 
And yeah, I will, I will be letting the, the, the team know and we'll, we're always constantly in discussion with our licensors to bring them into animated. So yeah, definitely we'll be bringing that one to the team. Thank you. Awesome. Ripper, Ripper, what's going on, man? You there? Hello. Hey, brother. Hello, David. First of all, Hi. huge congratulations on the success of VV. Thank you. Uh, my question is uh, that I'm a user from India and I haven't been able to cop a single drop in the last one month. And uh, same sentiment is also there in the people from Asian as well as Australian region. And then yes. I know certain people from USA and Canada and I see them copying a collectible on every single drop, which mm -hmm. I think is, which I think is very unfair, especially for the users from Asia region due to the regional latency issues that we have. So yeah. do we plan to change the drop system anytime soon? Also bringing uh, KYC, KYC along with uh, queue or waiting room system? Yes. Uh, so we, we, we have been listening to all the issues that we have. Um, and we we are going to be implementing a lot of changes, but we're not going to be announcing the changes what we're doing because uh, it will just give the bad actors a, a head start of prepping another way to bypass all these things. So you just really need to uh, be with us, um, you know, for in the coming weeks, there'll be more changes coming. And we, we do hear you. Um, um, and. But I do need to emphasize again is that we friends of mine down in New Zealand here, you know, managed to get a comment the other day. So it is all about uh, proportion pro rata. When you have fifty thousand people going for a thousand item, it's always going to be very hard. So I do apologize. You experiment, you know, you're having that experiment going through. I, I mentioned earlier, we didn't know it was going to be this popular, to be very honest. We we're hoping, you know, that it's, it's going to be a shop where people can come in and buy what they want. But it seems like our audience are just so hungry for everything that we produce. Uh, we hear you and we'll be on top of that. And just keep your eye out on any update release we have coming. Awesome. Appreciate that. Augustus, what's going on, man? All right, let's jump to Crypto Wizard. Hey, guys. Um, yeah, just uh, I think some of the things I was going to bring up have, have just pretty much been covered. You know, being in Australia, uh, a few of the friends that I've got into, <coughs> excuse me, the app, um, at the last, yeah, four weeks or so, it seems to be pretty much impossible to get anything. And a lot of the sentiment is it's it's regional based uh, when we're all in drop rooms and, you know, people in uh, in yeah US and Canada seem to get drops and <laughs> no one else does. I was wondering if there was any you know sort of numbers on that or, you know, if we can uh, yeah how do I how do I keep them engaged if uh, if there's you know um, can I confidently say look this is just because of how quick they're selling out or uh, um, is there yeah. a solution coming or is preparing for uh, master collector the way to go? <laughs> yeah, there, there's definitely a solution we we're working on, um, uh, but you know the there's a lot of people trying to get into the app on the drop dates. Uh, and we, uh, you know, this is like 10 to 20 times more than we expected. Um, I need to be honest. Um, we yeah, were not totally expecting this much. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering if, uh, we like are, you we, said, it was you a... Know, we, we, yeah, we, we are going to look at, you know, coming up, maybe do region drops. Um, we, we do have other things in plan. Um, so to ensure that things don't just sell out, and second, um, we, we were going to do it with the James Bond to do regional drops. Uh, and it was only the last minute we decided, uh, you know, we, we just don't want the community to feel like they're missing out. So in, in the future, if we do do regional, we'll start advertising a lot earlier. So uh, there will be people have an opportunity to get it. Uh, Master Collector Program is definitely something that um, will be emphasis a lot of emphasis in there will be on how it gives you ability to uh, guarantee yourself or have a chance, a better chance of getting one on the lottery. And I think Daniel covered that yesterday in the AMA quite well. And the article will be published in the coming week. Yeah. So just oh, awesome. keep your eye out on that. Thank you. 
Yeah, I was more wondering if there was, like, you said it was a friend from New Zealand that got a comic sort of thing. I was just wondering if there were, you know, any any sort of numbers, like, is it people's imagination and the demand that's feeling like it's a regional thing, or is it the latency? Uh, yeah. yeah it, solution's it, coming it, soon, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it, it is really just because the lo- the number is so limited. Uh, we, we are going to work on all the other issues, and I think, Many many of our community know that we 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 have a zero tolerance on the bot users. So you know we have vocally tell tell people don't use bot. We will ban your account or restrict your account. Uh, we are doing it, and obviously the bot users are are not happy. So yeah, so yeah, uh, but keep keep your eye out on more updates. I'm. Awesome. I made that. it back. Augustus, yeah, go ahead and jump jump back yeah, in. Well, thanks, man. It's odds here, David. This is amazing. Um, first of all, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the extra time. Uh, man, it's awesome. Uh, first of all, a uh, couple of serious questions here, I guess you could say. Are we going to get some kind of a roadmap? Something that will, you know, I, I'm going to build on what Eric said, you know, like, the medium articles are awesome, but will we get something, you know, quarterly, something we can look at that will help us understand the the, the upcoming time frame? Uh, yeah, um, we I think we do bring out once a month uh, monthly update in our medium. In regards to more for roadmap, uh, I'd, I'd need to be honest. We're just a little bit under resourced at the moment to do that. Uh, you know, up to today on our white paper, we pretty much have delivered everything that we have say out, you know, and and, and we're now live. And obviously our biggest issue is listening and feeling the pain, you know, on scaling and getting all the things done right. So in the next few months is really all about scaling, you know, and and how we can catch up with the backlog of things that we have uh already in the pipeline it's come to a little bit of bottleneck but you know we we think and after give us another few months and we'll get have, have that all cleared out and then we can start giving people quarterly what we're going to be doing coming up amazing thank you that's uh Thanks. that's great and you know what um you know what you're doing with with the resources you've had um listening to you talk about you know the um uh, the shoestring type of uh, employee base and working through everything with the VCs. I think we all appreciate so much uh, what you're bringing here, uh, what you're bringing to the uh, to the user base, to the community. Um, it's just, uh, it's very much appreciated. Uh, I haven't had many opportunities myself to speak on these spaces, but uh, it's, uh, it's great to be able to talk to you directly. Um, so I'm going to leave it with this. David, what are the chances what is the likelihood of an acquisition by a larger company? I'm not going to name any names. Do you believe that Better something's not. possible? And would you say that that is something you see happening in the next, let's say, 12 to 24 months? No, not really. I mean, um, we, 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 you know, we stopped taking phone calls, to be very honest with you. Um, because pe- <laughs> yeah, because pe- people don't really understand why we're doing this. Um, you you have to understand. Me and Dan, we 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 struggle a lot through through this four and a half year journey. Um, a lot more than you know. We one day we'll do a Netflix or a book or a documentary about it. You know, we went through a lot of pain um, to be where we are today. And, you know, all this will come out as a story. Um, we, you know, for a number of years, we didn't take any money for salary. You know, we we lived very limb and lean, trying to get past every hurdle. Um, and it, it's a, like anyone, it's a dream project. And I love collecting. And it's my soul. Every Everything you see in, in the app now is basically creation of me and Dan orchestrating and curating every collectibles we spend midnight you know at midnight before i go to bed or even sometime even early in the morning we get get up and we talk about 
what should we roll out what's a good idea what do people want to see uh there's just so much soul in it i you know i don't think anyone understand us um the pain we went and the the share and the blood and tear that we had put into this app and we will let our community down if we you know just bail and and walk away or sell so definitely nothing in the horizon and as the same earlier you know we stopped taking phone calls but in in a way we we do need to scout we do need to you know ensure that the longevity of the business is going to be there um so uh, we we are going to you know possibly we might acquire other people in the coming um months or year um to scout what we want to do we we do have big dreams Hey. Uh, da da da, man, you up, bro? That David, man, good gracious, man. All right, yeah, da da da, man. You're All up. right, uh, David, I have to tell you, you are absolutely one of the most approachable and humble um, founders, and it, it, I, I am blown away by the transparency that you are sharing, not only today but in the past. Um, your genuine love for what you're doing is. Um, getting me even more hyped about uh, Omi. Um, I joined specifically as an investor for Omi. I've never collected in my life. And I will just share one thing with you. Um, I got hooked, <laughs> you know, on the NFT collections. And literally I schedule my meetings um, based on the drop, <laughs> right? So I, I'm in the U.S. So, uh, you know, I think that time is, uh, it's, it's literally something that has hooked me and what you guys are doing is fantastic. Now, with that said, I did have one or two questions that I would love to have you answer. Um, the OMI token is what I got in, in, involved in and the main reason for it. So every time I kind of hear about like, you know, the buybacks or, you know, the token utility, yes, I'm very excited about it. Uh, but with just so much circulating supply and all of that, it seems like it's still like six to 12 months until you really start seeing any significant burns until there's a VV worse or something like that. Am I, am I correct in assuming that? Um, yes or no? And then I just had one or two other questions after that. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I mean, it, it, you know, we, um, you know, based on the advice that we've been given on the, on the token side of this thing, um, the, the idea is to burn as much and produce as much product out there. Um, and definitely we found, you know, a way possibly to increase that uh, burn rate will be having the Phoebe first, you know, when when people mm-hmm. can start purchasing items that's greater than $6.99. And you, you do have to understand that we do have a backlog of products that's coming out and it will definitely just be burning more as we go. Um, yeah, I, I mean, we, we, okay. we are in the close monitoring of, of, of all, all, all these above as well. Okay, wonderful. And then I just had two other points I wanted to make is, you know, there is so much positive publicity, uh, visibility that I feel like the momentum for VV. And this is just my own suggestion. And I don't mean this in any negative way. But the only thing I would say is that, you know, when I heard about OpenSea and like this insider trading and all of that other mm-hmm. information, as you guys are growing, I just hope you have the proper protocols in place to make sure that there's nothing negative negative that could come out. Yes. Because the passion and the love that you guys have um, is fantastic. I am I am I'm even a bigger fan today after just listening to you speak, um, to be honest. Thank you. Um, and I, I, I want that to keep going, um, if that I, makes I, sense. You, and, you know, and, <laughs> and, and the reason why myself, Dan, and our team, Reese, um, everyone who is in the public facing, we are very transparent. Uh, that's why we're on these call, um, simply because we got nothing to hide. We just want to tell you how it is. Um, and, you know, I, I can't really relate to what happened in Opusinga. I have read about it. Um, in, in, our, in our side, in Vivi, uh, I do wake up 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. now. Uh, with daylight saving, I do try to get the job myself. Uh, I don't get any advantage. Uh, there's no, you know, founders 10 seconds before everyone, nothing. Uh, we, you know, the the move, when we advertised the movie tickets a few days ago, I think with the bond ticket, they all went out. Um, 
you know, we, we managed to trace who owns those, got their details to pass it on to get the real movie ticket to be uh, sent to them. So, um, yeah, well, I, I think we're probably one of the most transparent company out there. Um, and I think if we screw things up, we will tell you, we'll apologize, and we hope, you know, we'll get forgiveness and we move on and we build a stronger team. And that's what we're all about. Beautiful, man. Uh, hop, hop, skip, man. Uh, hey, thanks, Kaki, for putting me on. Um, David, I want to say, um, you know, I discovered this app um, two weeks ago, and it has taken over my life. Um, <laughs> I am thousands into Omi, thousands into collectibles. Um, I heard you speaking about, um, you know, um, the the gems the cash transfer and you said that 30 percent is taken by apple uh when we buy gems so does that mean one gem is equal to 70 cents now when we cash out no uh one gem is still one dollar us there will be a uh, there will be a transaction fee coming out uh we haven't finalized that and we will be advertising Hello? that when it's ready Yeah, can can you not hear him? Um, Hop skip. Can you not hear David talking to you? Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me? Oh. Uh, we may have we we may have to come yeah. back. We'll pause you. your answer on that. Um, we'll welcome in uh, Reverend Alex. Did you have something you wanted to say, man? Did you want to take the reins of this, bro? I got a newfound respect for what you do in these spaces. Good God Almighty, bro. <laughs> Yo, I, I'm I'm in these spaces a lot, and you know it, it's as David said, it's it's a it's a learning experience, and I am, you know, as as the marketing guy, I'm only here to learn and and feel out the community because, you know, if you're not part of the community, then you can't understand the community, and I hope you guys realize listening to my boss talk here. That why I consider this a career defining role for me. I am so excited and, and just blessed to be part of this project. Outside of the reason, you know, of how well it's doing, it's just there's an actual passion behind it that like cannot you cannot just go to any CEO of a company on on the verge of you know of a new technology. And, and get the kind of stories that you have. And I've been around the block. I've been in music. I've been in startups. And I have to tell you that, look, honestly, I've not felt this good about what I'm doing as a job in a long time. And it just doesn't feel like a job that way. So thank Thanks, you, Alex. David, for taking yeah. the time, A. And then you... my, so my question is, um, when marketing? <laughs> oh my god um, yeah uh, I, I just want to add a little bit about uh, what Alex say um, so you guys understand uh, I, maybe 80 or 90% of the employees or contractors even 90% of the employer contractor at Vivi or Ecomi uh, myself and Dan have never met physically and mm -hmm. it just shows you the fast how fast the world is has moved you know back back in the day when i hire another store manager or assistant i will sit there i'll do two or three interview all that's gone you know just we you know we go out out of way to find the best people that connect with us and you know and we're very very lucky to find alex um and you know when marketing uh, why, why are you on this call? Oh, you're, you're doing a marathon. You're taking my bed and that, right? <laughs> I, I will take, I, I, I tell you, I'll take three more questions and then Alex can take the room over for me because I do have okay. to go back to awesome. work. So three more questions. Okay. Okay. So we got, we got um, Deadpool, Omega and, and um, Randy Chavez. Okay. Deadpool. Well, thank, thanks for that, Kaki. Thanks for hosting. Uh, thanks, David and, and Alex. Uh, happy anniversary. Um, just wanted to thank say, you. 
David, you've, you know, you've created something wonderful here and um, you know, Kaki also invited me into this community as well and made me feel welcome. Um, pretty much, I just want to say it's beyond collectibles as well. Um, I feel like what you've done has brought also friendship within this community as well and also just ignited old embers. So I haven't drawn in 10 years and now I'm just one of the content creators in the Vive community. Um, nice. and I never expected doing that you know, a year ago. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to say this has gone beyond collecting. Um, my, my question for you, David, was um, we're part of um, Voltaholics. So it's a new group that's just been coming up now within Vive. And I just thought that um, earlier on with Vive and probably just your perspective and your vision just earlier when creating the app that the showroom seemed more like a trophy system. Um, however, we've kind of changed things and merge collectibles together and now we're making these videos um i was just wondering is that something that you expected to happen to see this kind of new form of collecting and and the way that we're kind of playing with these toys we we originally when we start pitching the license or uh I, I will remember and i i honestly uh and this will be dan sitting in back of the uber and punching out powerpoint and i say add that in do this do that um, is that we really believe that the user-generated content was always going to be a big thing for the community, that uh, we we really respected uh, some of the talent. And I, I think I have seen um, your the, the room, the house that you've done with the big sign on it. And, I mean, there's, there's some major creativity. I, I mean, it's gone beyond what me and Dan thought people would do uh, there's a lot of smart way i don't even know how people do it on their phone to do some of the work um the artworks um and hopefully with the new bill and the new rollout that it will allow these creativity to be easier to engage so and and that was one of the few reasons why the showroom number two didn't come out straight away because we kind of knew that our users the og users kind of got used to it and quite like it and they like the room how they done it and we didn't want to destroy that um the artwork so the the new room that's coming out uh there will be a reflection of an upgrade of that room um and that the, the whole purpose is that we don't we hopefully all the artworks will still exist how you position the collectible uh, but going back to your uh, your question is that um uh, you know, we, we knew user-generated content was going to be a major viral effect, but we never, uh, there's just so many talent uh, in pockets and groups of talents like yourself coming up with new ways of putting these collectible together and tell a story. And, you know, it's a way for you you to explain to people why you're into this and what 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 makes you thought this is fun and and to share that so yeah i mean thank you for sharing that um to me um and we'll we'll keep telling our licensor you know this is important and this is why people are in vv as well yeah, th thank you very much and i'll just finalize by just saying um it was awesome you mentioning deadpool in the last ama um i jumped off the couch and just doing karate in the air so yeah, that was <laughs> awesome. Thanks for that. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, I did tell Rob Lithfield in London. That's I, I had the photo with him taking in London in 2018, I think, at the London comic movie uh, show. And I told him, you know, I told him, one day you will see Deadpool or one of your Marvel characters out there and augmented and people will be able to buy and trade. Um, yeah. And I... I, I you know, next time I do see Rob, I'll show him uh, what we've done. And obviously, he knows that he's tweeted out the the comic book to in support with Phoebe. So uh, it's definitely one of my favorite um, covers as well, and my one of my favorite artists and writer out there. Awesome. Uh, next up, Omi oh Guy. Yay! <laughs> Super excited. Um, <laughs> Yeah, just yeah, two yeah. quick things um so i'm not a collector by any means i mean i have two kids so i collect you know like their toys and stuff like that 
but I love the team more than I love the the product. Um, so I have like 30, 30 collectibles. Wow. But I will say um, I would trade all of those for a picture with the team because I love the team more than than the product. Man, thank you so uh, much. And uh, just the, the other thing. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I don't know. <laughs> I um, wish, but do, do you have a Donnie yeah. by chance? Oh, no way. No way. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm... They get that picture right to him then, huh? I, I don't know if I would say that if I had the Donnie. Just kidding. Um, and the, the other thing um, that I wanted to say is to, you know, keep tradition alive. Because, you know, we had the Wen Edo. Are you guys planning on withholding any other collectible to keep that tradition alive? Um, we, yeah. Um we we've got a lot of cool stuff coming out. Um, I need to have a look at the roadmap. Uh, they are constantly always uh, moving uh, pieces like chairs is moving all the time. Um, we um, we I think we've got a lot more upgrade things we want to do gamification. You know, just some good ideas we we got. Um, yeah, it, it was a very special one. It, it was a very, very hard to get that approval. Oh my god! I mean, yeah, I'm I'm glad we got it out uh, before end of yesterday. You know, uh, otherwise I don't know what the audience will say uh, to us. <laughs> you know, season three, Edel hasn't still come. What's happening? Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but we we definitely have a lot of. Um, hidden easter eggs coming up um just put it that way um we, we're all about having fun with the community and getting people engaged and talk about it thank you Good thank night. you awesome. randy what's going on brother hey thank you guys so much for having me david you you're a hero of mine i, I and i think all of ours i hope you know that uh i'll yeah. keep this short for you <laughs> thanks I'll, I'll keep this short for you because i know we um you know, you, you, you got to get back to work. I think it would be really bullish for people to hear you guys talk about, let's say, in April, going over your first quarter of the year, profit and loss, balance sheet, to see what the company's had. Would you ever do that? And do you have a any other crypto on your guys' balance sheet outside of OMI? Um, I mean, crypt- and, uh, yeah, I mean, we we are pub, uh, we are privately held company, and the reason why we don't give much info out, uh, and we've been extremely low key, is simply, um, and I need to be honest, we are startup. We didn't raise like some of these other companies out there hundreds of millions, uh, and some of these projects out there getting multiple billion valuation. I don't even know how they can pull the cat out of that hat or rabbit. Now, in, in in our balance sheet, I don't think we have much other crypto outside OMI. I mean, it is our own native, uh, you know, home currency uh, we believe in. So <clears throat> we stick quite true to it. Uh, we might have one or two other assets, but not substantial for sure. Um, you know, t- t- you know, I... I mean, to be honest, we do have gold token. I mean, we need to pay the gas fee uh, for some of these, for for the o- OMI movement, things like that. So nothing substantial that um, that it's it's meaning meaningful in there. Yeah. Okay. Th- thank you for the answer. And and if you ever need anything, you or any of the Comi team, uh, let me know, and and I'll try to help in any way I can. No, I do appreciate that. And I, I did see your latest video uh, trying to come up with ways to buy it. I think you had that three or four phones on pretty fast. So uh, I, I, I do try to follow what, what you do. So thank you for supporting us all the all the time. So, yeah, yes. Um, I mean, all my lives, you, I, I have a single phone for me. But 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 yeah, I, I definitely understand people that, that try, try as they might. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Awesome. David, um, before you leave, I just want to tell you that thank you for coming into the space. And to me, it's like this felt to me like you, Jay Z, and you came to my house and said, "What's up, Lenny?" <laughs> and I'm like, this starstruck. So, 
thank you very much for coming in here and to your whole team. God bless. Thank and may we all yeah. get to where we go. Thank, thank you for yeah, giving definitely. me. I mean, I, I really popped in just to listen to uh, some of the staff Trevor was uh, talking because to, to be very honest, we we are all very busy people at, at, at Phoebe and we work in multiple time zones. So sometimes for me to catch up what's happening and some of the idea, uh, we, we try to dial in when we have time to listen to it. And, you know, I'm just very lucky to, you know, have be on your show today and i see alex has come on our head of marketing so alex i didn't i didn't leak anything this time i just want you to know i, I mean that's uh, really I, the only reason i'm here <laughs> is to make sure you didn't <laughs> yeah uh is reese also on is it reese yeah it's ecomi slash reese okay cool guys um yeah so just let our legal team know hey, David, that nothing before you leaked. go is it possible for me to ask a really quick question i've been waiting a little while to yeah, and, sure. and i was hoping yeah, so um, I'm actually, I've started since March and I have hundreds of collectibles um, and I'm just really invested in, in Ecomi and Vivi. Um, I had a question because some of my NFTs were taken three months ago um, because they were refunded to whoever got yep. them stolen or, or whatever. And then they got refunded at a market price I bought them off the app for, which is significantly less than what they're worth today. Um, this, I think there was kind of raised like a few months ago that there might be some sort of additional compensation for things like that was that considered afterwards uh yeah i mean we, we definitely did uh, took a while to get through the initial um the the be, before the 2fa happened um we we would have um uh, it's either i think the compensation was either the um the the what whatever was purchased for that's all we refunded um in regards to will there be any more bonus on top of it, uh, I can't promise that. Um, there, I think the last one we ran was uh, Alex. What was that figure we give out on uh, the Labbits with Frank? Yeah, the secret rare Labbit. Yeah, that was due to what gem was gate. that? Gem gate. Yeah, the gem gate. So we we haven't had one for that one. Oh, do. And what do we do on the Ultraman uh, artwork one? The 2D, the 2D yeah. uh, uh, Ultraman poster. Yeah, that's the Secret Rare Ultraman. It's just for some people, like, for example, like the Todd. I bought it for 300 It was worth 600 at the time. I got back 300 even though, you know, I wasn't the one that stole the NFT, but it got taken from me. Yeah. And then I got reimbursed half the price to buy it back from the market, whereas some people who – may have bought it off the app were given the opportunity to have the NFT replaced. But because I was I purchased it off the market, it was automatically refunded to me. So it's just a bit of a discrepancy. Uh, I'm pretty plugged into like the Telegram community. So a lot of mm. people were discussing and we were just talking about the way that it was handled. And so that's why I brought this up. And, and, and also I wanted to ask another question uh, regarding some of the accounts that have been um, restricted from Wi-Fi or some, in, in some cases, even the data. Um, I think there was a tweet or something earlier on that said all of these restrictions would eventually be lifted. Then the previous AMA, you also said that we would need to support a, submit a ticket. So are we going to oh, yes. get all those restrictions uh, lifted or yes. do we need to submit a ticket? Okay, so uh, uh, going back to the first question, I do apologize about you know that hack up. Um, moving forward, that should never be happening again, hopefully. Um, and I, I can only sincerely apologize again that um, it, it will be out, you know, we, we weren't able to reach out and do more at the moment um, simply because we don't know how many similar case has affected. And, and at VV, we're always about fairness. And if we were to uh, give you something, we'll have to give everyone at that same time rollback something as well. So... It's probably not going to happen. I'd be very honest with you. Uh, but in regards to the recent um, restrictions, um, obviously we have a zero tolerance. We don't want people, we don't want these type of behavior and the bot uses in, because it does create negative, negative sentiment, you know, for other users when they miss out, they complain. But uh, you, you have one of two options. There's number one is to submit a ticket if you want to have that, uh, restriction lifted. Do keep in mind 
the the customer service team have thou uh, over a thousand or two thousand submission on it. So just give them some time to work on it. Um, but we will be uh, really the restrictions is for a matter of time, and they will automatically come unlock. Um, you know, it, it might be a fortnight or you know two or three weeks later down. So yeah, just to clarify there, David, don't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. Yeah. But um, when we say thousands, we mean there are thousands of support tickets in Correct. in general, as opposed Correct. to about market restrictions. As Dan mentioned on the yeah. AMA the other That's day, correct. It's, 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 yeah, about four, you know, five hundred ish people are affected by the actual market restrictions. In which case, we are prioritizing those tickets correct. and going through each of them because, you know, to be fairly honest, like we did essentially a sweep of a number of accounts uh, that were flagged for one reason or another. Um, and some of those were done in air. So we are prioritizing the tickets that in uh, doing research on the ones that are, have filed the ticket about market restrictions to unblock those that have been found to uh, have not uh, participated in any kind of quote unquote nefarious activity. That's so great. We appreciate yeah. your patience on that front. Yeah. So we just, okay, yeah. Just, uh, just one last comment. Uh, I wanted to inquire as to how uh, VV or Ecomi is going to treat the collectible. So um, the accounts that are restricted are unable to transfer out NFTs, unable to transfer out gems, and unable to access the market. Um, it, if if VV or Ecomi determines that, you know, it's nefarious or whatever, just because a lot of people I've been speaking to have claimed that they haven't done anything wrong, um, and then there's some concern about this VV, the policing aspect of it, um, how is Vivi going to treat these collectibles after they determine, if they determine something has been I don't know, against the terms of service, for example, because people might have actually put in, or many people have bought in thousands of dollars worth of money. Yeah. Um, obviously, number one, the, you know, we have no intention to confiscate your asset or your gems. Uh, we will put restrictions uh, so you can only do certain things with the collectible or uh, certain action on it. Um, that the whole idea is to be fair with other people who, you know, try to participate in the normal uh, drop release. Um, uh, but, you know, those collectibles belong to your account. Um, once again, you can feel them still. You can see them in showroom. Uh, we just don't allow you to transfer. But if you were caught as a bot, I think we'll be in contact with you. Is either, um, there, there's few things. Uh, we either refund you uh, that purchase collectible. So, and that collectible basically comes back to the company and then maybe later on we use it as a giveaway price or something, that type, type of thing. So uh, we haven't decided what to do with that. Uh, but just for the innocent parties that, you know, you should write in, um, you should do a sub submit ticket. Just do, do be aware we are a little bit behind. Awesome. Appreciate that, man. Um, okay, I, I yeah, appreciate so, uh, all those answers. I know I kind of jumped in at the end. No, uh, that's but, all right. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, it, it's it's it's, it's important all good. stuff. Yeah, uh, Alex, yeah. Uh, yeah. thanks for popping in. I think we're doing. Uh, I wasn't expecting to be on this for a couple hours. <laughs> all um, right, baton uh, pass. It, it looks like it's a nice marathon for <laughs> our team um, to to give these feedback. And thanks so much uh, for all your hard work. Thank yeah. you. I'm happy to take over for a bit. Definitely. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you, guys. David. Right. Thanks, David. Thank you, man. David. Thank you, David. Thanks. I still love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Alex, man, ready appreciate for this downgrade? you coming in, bro. Uh, let's go. Yeah. No, no, let's no. Go. This is definitely not a downgrade. Thank you, David. Yo, I'm lagging like crazy, so <laughs> I was hella late. But hey, Alex, what's up, bro? It's not a downgrade with you, bro. You always live. He was like, oh. 